Well, we have a small audience, but hello. Um, we're here to give you guys some information about our upcoming study abroad programs. For those of you who are uh, tuning in um, online, hello. And if you have any questions, then please feel free to email us and we'll be happy to give you any information that you need. Uh, but with me are Dr. Nancy Gray from the WP Carey School, who will be leading the France Study Abroad program with me, and uh, Karen Borderlo, who is going to be talking about um, a new internship program that we're launching for summer 2022. So uh, thank you for those of you who are here. There's snacks there for you to take advantage of. Um, and remember, you can email us if you have any questions. So welcome, you guys. Thank you. Um, so we're going to talk first about the study abroad program to France. Um, if we can go into uh, the next slide, Chris. Sorry, I forgot I had the clicker. Thank you. Um, so as I was mentioning, um, Dr. Gray and I are going to be leading the program. This is a program that is going to run both through uh, the Cronkite School and through WP Carey. Dr. Gray is going to be teaching the course on marketing, and I am going to be focusing on the course that is for uh, the communication side. So um, let's go into the next slide as well. Um, let me play this quick video for you guys on what the festival is about, and then we'll um, ask any questions if you guys have them. So uh, Chris, if you want to kick it. It's been called the Oscars of advertising. Every year, the The best of the media, marketing, and advertising industries come here to the south of France to compete for top industry awards and to get their creative juices flowing. We're talking about the Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity. Cannes, France has no problem being in the spotlight. The coastal city on the French Riviera is probably best known for hosting A-list celebrities every year at the International Film Festival. In fact, it was the Cannes Film Festival that inspired a group of advertising contractors to create their own big industry event more than 60 years ago. They launched the International Advertising Film Festival in 1954, located not in Cannes, but Venice, Italy. And it was Venice that helped inspire the prize for the best advertising films, a lion trophy modeled by the Lion Monument in Piazza San Marco. Two years later, the festival moved to Cannes, and it alternated between the two cities until Cannes became its permanent home in 1984. In the 1990s, the festival started adding on seminars by experts in the industry. Panels now cover subjects from healthcare to innovation, but the festival still gives out those iconic lion statues. Today, Cannes Lions has evolved beyond ad agencies with tech companies and brands joining in too. Networking has become as important, if not more, than the awards. In numbers, last year's festival featured more than 16,000 attendees, 1,000 speakers, and 4,700 companies. 22 out of the world's 25 biggest brands by marketing expenditures will attend this year's festival. Take, for example, Procter & Gamble and Samsung, brands that account for around $20 billion in marketing every year combined. But this year, one of the world's biggest advertising companies, Publicis, made headlines when it said it would scale back its presence at the event. One of the reasons? It's too expensive. The cost for a complete pass to get access to the entire festival is more than 3,000 euros, or $3,700. And that's still over $1,000 less than last year. Critics say this Chris, has made Cannes a I destination can. for the elite to show off their wealth. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that gave you guys it's a been little... called the Oscar background, I guess, of, of what the festival is about. But um, during the day, there's a lot of opportunities for you to engage uh, throughout the festival. So there's a mix between talks, panels, workshops, there's uh, cocktail parties, and then every brand that is there, like for example, Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, will create their own spaces and will have their own workshops and opportunities for you to engage with uh, executives from the companies. So um, this is a really unique opportunity to get to know uh, the top players in the strategic communication field. Anyone that works in creativity or that works in public relations and advertising aims to win one of these awards. Um, and actually attending as a student is a very unique opportunity because it's extremely expensive to attend even as an advertising or as a strategic communication executive. And only the best of the best get to go that are sent by the particular um, agencies. 
So for this course, um, you guys will be um, doing some work before we go and after we come back. And while you're there, we're going to follow a very similar structure to that of Dr. Gray's course, where we're going to be working on critiquing the work that is there. You guys are going to have to um, write um, some sort of you know, a blog or something like that, produce a survey, and we're also going to have you interview people that are attending the festival. Um, for Cronkite students, there's um, opportunity to either earn graduate or undergraduate credit. Uh, so it's a three credit class, and there are a couple of prereqs that are listed here. So if you guys have any questions about um, the, the prereqs, please do let me know. Um, Nancy, anything that you would like to add based on your experience? I think there are a few places on the planet where you can have such access to people that are making a difference in the field of communication in the field of advertising and i think everybody is in their um, their their shirts and their shorts and it's you know it gets guard the guard is down and you can just walk up to somebody who's the ceo of a major company and just start a conversation with them and they're they're open to that um, you've got chances, conversations left and right to bump into people that are really interested in students. I mean, students, I think they really, students are the future of cre the creative industry. And so there's a receptivity to meeting and engaging with students that I've, I've never seen anywhere else. So it's a fantastic chance to network. Yeah, I would agree. And actually, um, I've been going to this festival with students since 2015. And every year, students get to network with um, extremely important people, and many of them have been offered internships on the spot after talking to some of the top-level executives at these companies, like Unilever. Um, so the opportunity for informality and for you to network um, is, is huge. So hopefully, many of you are going to take advantage of this. And you know, it's one of those places that you will get out of it what you put into it. And so if you spend your time and you look wisely at all the events that are there, um, it's just overwhelming. But if you pick ones that match your interest, match where you want to go, you're, go you're going to find your way and have a terrific time. It's just it's a, an enormous, mind-boggling smorgasbord. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So um, let's cover a little bit of, of the details. Uh, the program fee right now is uh, $5,000, and this includes tuition. It includes the festival pass. Uh, and as you just heard on the video, the festival pass is what eats up most of its cost. Um, even if we do get a prorated rate for students, it's still uh, quite expensive. So that is why sometimes this program fee is um, a little bit elevated. But again, uh, this includes your stay while we're in Cannes, it includes a couple of meals, it includes a festival pass, and it includes the three credit tuition for the summer. So this is a session C class uh, where you're going to be able to complete all of the work during session C. Um, and what we don't include are extra costs such as your airfare or any money that you want to spend while you're there. So if you want to go out to a bar and spend your own money, then by all means, um, that's going to be coming out of pocket. Um, so a couple of details that I cannot see from there, so I'm going to have to twist. Um, you will need to have a working cell phone, so that's something that you want to consider as added cost. And why do you need a working cell phone when you are abroad and something happens and you get lost, and especially if you don't speak French? It's great to be able to ask for assistance and let us know exactly where we are. So a working cell phone with data will be um, one of the requirements to attend this trip. Also, if you are thinking about um, looking at flights to help you make the decision, what airport should you fly to? Um, you will be flying into Nice, France, uh, but I again recommend you to be smart on how you use um, your search functions for getting che uh, cheap tickets. So um, you could be flying to Paris and then taking, you know, a, a smaller regional flight from Paris to Nice. You could take a train or you could even fly um, into places in Spain or perhaps even Italy and then fly into Nice. So um, if the flight cost is something that scares you, by all means, do some research and I'm sure you're going to be able to find some cheaper stuff. I think Marseille is also a possibility. Absolutely. Um, then um, I guess it, there's a question that we're all 
wondering about what will happen with COVID. Um, will we will we be able to travel? And what will happen if while I'm there I get COVID? So um, unfortunately, the program asks of students to take into account the cost of isolating in the case of COVID happening. If you do get a health insurance that is recommended through ASU, that will help you offset some of the costs associated with um, extending your stay. Uh, but the festival will ensure that people are probably vaccinated and they're using the masks. Um, one of the things that I would say is obviously before you travel, make sure that you're saving yourself for being able to go to the trip and not expose yourself to the opportunity of catching COVID right before getting on the plane. Um, but we are going to be three faculty members on site, so if anyone needs anything, if anything happens, we will have enough people to make sure that you're safe and that someone is taking care of you. Um, anything else to add about COVID or protocol? Um, I believe we're actually going to cover the cost for the test going home. Yes, yes. So the test to return back home will be covered in the cost. Um, as you know, right now, airlines are requesting people to test before coming back to the US. So in that case, we will make sure that we're all um, clear to fly. Um, and then the question about, can I stay longer or can I go earlier? Um, technically, the answer is yes. Um, the only difference is that ASU will not pay for your insurance or for your housing until the program starts and ends. Um, but you know, if you're flying to Europe and you want to take advantage of the opportunity of already being there, then by all means, uh, please let us know and we'll help you out. Right, the um, so officially the dates are Saturday through Saturday. And so we're asking students to to be there by Saturday around noon or a little bit after if possible, and then to stay through the following Saturday at 12, which is when the program officially ends. Um, you know, the now WP Carey is encouraging students to do their travel after, not before because of the COVID, because you don't want to expose yourself, end up in a situation where you can't attend the festival. Um, you, we don't want that. So it's strongly encouraging students to, you know, as soon as the program's over, everybody splits from Cannes pretty quickly. And so, you know, you are free to move about Europe as you see fit from, from there, from, um, I believe that's the 25th. Yes. Um, so then if you guys have any questions, uh, there's a QR code there that you can scan on your screen, or if you're here, you can take a photo and it will take you to the application website to submit your materials. We're going to try to wrap this up uh, very soon. We already have more applications than people that we can take. So if you want to make sure to be considered for this program, please make sure to submit your application as soon as possible. Um, later today, um, we're going to be talking about the uh, study abroad trip on visual photojournalism to London. Um, so if you cannot attend one of the programs because it's maxed out, there's still another one. But um, we're also going to be next talking with Karen about opportunities for internships abroad this summer. Uh, but before we go into Karen's portion of this, I just wanted to see if anyone that is here um, has a question that we could answer about the study abroad. And I think the silence is a no, but... Mm -hmm. um, this is a this is a good informational session. There are flyers here for you guys in case you want to uh, take them home and read more about the program. Uh, please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. And uh, my special thanks to Dr. Gray, who came all the way from WP Gary to be here with us today. And my thanks to you. Um, I couldn't be more excited that we're running this program together. So. You know, apply it's it's worth it it is a time there's one of the videos that's um is up on the website and it will say they say in it it will change your life and i don't think there's hyperbole in that i i really do think it's a remarkable experience and i encourage you to by all means explore it excellent well thank you nancy uh we'll let you get back to your really busy day because <laughs> we know you got a lot going on um, but we'll hopefully see you soon for the pre-departure orientation. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so um, now let's talk a little bit about opportunities for internships in Argentina. So um, Karen, and, and Karen and I have been working really hard in getting opportunities for students to go spend 11 weeks in Argentina getting uh, the internship credit done. So Karen, you want to talk a little bit about uh, the details of the program? And obviously, since I'm the Argentinian in residence, I'm happy to answer any questions about the program or the location. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll give you a lot of details about the internship because that's more my thing. Um, and Juan can give you some information about the actual dates. Um, it's 11 weeks starting in May to the end of July, but he can give you that actual information, actual costs. Uh, which are very low. It's really amazing to me how inexpensive this trip is. And in addition to that, you'll be able to take, um, let's say, two courses, two three credit courses and a one credit course. Um, we know for sure that the three credits of the internship course, which is the JMC 484 course, which is the required course for everyone um, who gets out of Cronkite. You don't get out of Cronkite unless you pass that course. We have made it so um, with um, the cooperation of Blas Pascal, which is the hosting university, to, um, to create the program that um, gives this, the exact number of hours that our interns need, the, um, the kind of supervision that our interns need, because it's different than a lot of other internship programs. Cronkite's is pretty stringent about things. Anyway, um, they've agreed. We, so whatever we have, you have this wonderful, wonderful opportunity to be in newsrooms or PR agencies or some form of communication, maybe even sports journalism in Argentina, in Cordoba, and transfer those credits back here. That's amazing, you know? So um, anyway, that's this summer. And what am I missing? Well, I guess questions that the students might have. Um, do I need to speak Spanish to take this internship abroad? No, you don't. So the internships were created specifically in English and our host university there will make sure to match you with the type of internship that you are interested in doing. So let's say that you are more, more interested in journalism perhaps than in, on social media, right? So then you are going to be placed in a position that will allow you to maximize uh, your opportunities. So um, normally there's only one student place per company so that there's not going to be a lot of you competing for attention or for supervision or anything like that. Um, and we have had students placed in anything from newsrooms to newspapers to people that needed support in creating their strategy for public relations and companies that want to do business with the US and they don't know where to start. So there's been a lot of opportunities in the past. Um, other questions that you guys might have, uh, the program is about $3,000 for 11 weeks, and that includes the tuition. Um, it also includes um, your accommodation with a host family, with meals in the morning uh, for lunch and then for dinner. It also includes laundry and transportation to and from the airport. Um, other questions that you guys might have about this program, you're going to be taking then three classes at our host university. One of them is Spanish for survival. And although you won't need it for the actual internship, you might need it for moving around while you're in Argentina. So um, with that one credit, you're going to be able to learn how to ask for basic information. Um, you're also going to be taking a three credit class on Argentinian culture and history, and that's just to give you a better understanding of the host country and the culture that you're embedded in. And actually the class is, is quite interesting because you're going to be doing horseback riding, they're going to teach you how to cook um, Argentinian dishes, you're going to be doing field trips to different places, so there's a lot going on. It's, it's not just a history course that you would take uh, somewhere else. And then there are some optional trips too as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then students, um, there's already a, a trip to the north of Argentina that coincidentally looks a lot like Arizona. Um, that's where you can find cacti and um, all of the similar stuff to the saguaros that we have here. Um, so it 
it, the trip comes already with a with a trip to the north, but students will have an opportunity to buy all their weekend trips through the host university to go and visit other places. Um, other universities also take advantage of his internship program there. Uh, so Texas Tech goes there pretty often. Clemson University is also there pretty often. So there's a chance that there might be other American students that you might meet during this um, internship program. Um, what other details could I share? I'm trying to think. Um, do they get to go to Buenos Aires? I am not sure on the lineup, but I'm sure that that will be one of the optional trips. I know you get to go to Mendoza, which is really awesome. Yeah. Um, so hopefully many of you will take advantage of this internship program. It's going to be the first time that we have it kind of officialized through Cronkite. And as you know, um, by Karen being here, we will make sure that everything from the back end for career services is taken care of. Um, we're going to be launching the applications through the career website um, very soon, and there's going to be a Google form that you need to complete. I believe that we're going to need to be sending all of the materials to our host university there probably around March 1st. So there's going to be a very short window for applications, and we will take about 8 to 10 students, more if possible, but um, 8 to 10 would be the ideal number. Yeah, I think that's good. I, and maybe you should also know that um, we are also starting to work on uh, study abroad internships for the following summer, which is the summer of 2023. We're getting those going because we've really never had that at Cronkite. And now um, we're opening doors. And so there might be the opportunity for some of you who are either sophomore or early juniors um, to do an internship in Berlin or an internship in Sydney, Australia. Who knows, but we're working on those. Um, other technical questions that you guys might have, what happens if I already took internship credit? What happens if what? If they already took the oh, internship yeah. credit. Great question. Okay, so the JMC 484, as you know, is like the, the internship course. That's the mandatory one. However, if you've already taken JMC 484 and you still want to do the Argentina study abroad internship, then you can take it through the MCO 294 course, which is great. It's only one credit, but you'll still probably be working the same number of hours as if, it, if you were doing the 484, but it's okay. It's like, I think it's nine to one pretty much every day, Monday through Friday, and then the afternoons are free to do other things. Um, so there's that. And then also graduate students are invited to participate too. They can take um, the uh, MCO 584 course. Um, that's a free credit course, same kind of situation. Um, and back to the 294 course, uh, if you are, um, if, you're, if you're coming to the end of your freshman year, you're in your sophomore year, and you don't have the requirements to take JMC 484 in this way, you're just not there yet, um, then you can take the MCO 294. So you might not have any requirements done. You might have not taken 301 and 302 or 305 and 306. If you haven't done that, you still have an opportunity to do this internship with one credit through the 294 course. Excellent. So I doubt that we have many questions on the floor, but if there are any questions, we would be happy to answer. Any questions about the internship program? Dead silence. So that's a no. <laughs> Excellent. So um, again, you can email cronkiteglobal at asu.edu if you have questions, or you can be in touch with Karen's office as well. Mm -hmm. um, services. Career services, absolutely. And uh, we just want to encourage you guys to take advantage of these international opportunities because intercultural and multicultural skills are really important for anyone working in communications. Exactly. And it'll look great on your resume. Absolutely. So um, with that, we're wrapping up the internships. Thank you, Karen, for being here. And I see that uh, Jim and Penny are already here, so they can give us a, an overview of their study abroad program to the UK. So uh, thank you, Karen, and let's welcome Jim and Penny. Um, I'm actually with Graphic Information Technology, GIT. I'm Polly. Um, and one of the reasons I'm doing this with Jim uh, is, uh, and I'm Penny Ann Dolan, Professor Dolan, whatever. The reason I'm doing this with Jim is because originally Chris 
Callahan and Mr. Bill Silcock uh, had asked me to join for the photo part because I'm an ex photojournalist. That was my original um, life. So then I went commercial, sold out totally. But originally I was a photojournalist. So that's why I'm here. Um, so, well, yeah, we'll just give, it, give an overview of the trip. Yeah. Um, basically, this is a, it counts for a photo uh, 351, JMC 351 class, a photo J class. Um, it is a 10 day trip to London. Um, it is, as Penny was saying, it's half still photography and then half mobile journalism. My half is uh, teaching, we'll use phones basically, we'll shoot interviews, we'll learn to B-roll, um, framing, we'll learn to edit in a specific program called Adobe Rush, um, all on our phones. Um, there'll be different assignments that will culminate with a little documentary about your trip. Um, and then on Penny's side, Okay, and so I'm going to take over the photo side, of course, uh, and it's about telling a story with a camera. Um, you guys are pretty lucky you have a, um, a locker, so if you don't have a DSLR, you can check one out uh, for the class. Got to return it, though. And um, we will be basically video and photo doing stories based on where we are. One of the cool things with um, the uh, logistics person that we work with is they're amazing in organizing things. So we'll be going to the BBC. We will hook up with uh, a, a photojournalist who will meet us for some of the shoots, uh, videographer. Um, when we went, we went to Barcelona, my God, two years ago now, um, we went to a TV station. So we'll probably be doing the same sort of things. Yeah, we'll be visiting. The plan is to visit the BBC, um, ITV, I think it is, mm -hmm. uh, and then perhaps a newspaper as well, if it's one such that just yes. exists over there. Um, and so it'll be it'll be a good combination of experience in the culture, documenting the culture, finding stories in regular places, so to speak, um, and then learning from professionals in the field that work and live in London at these high uh, high-end outlets. Yeah, I know many of you are in production and broadcasting and more used to video and the whole teams. One thing you'll discover as a photojournalist is you, you can kind of slip into places and things a little more easily, your little smaller crews, just you. And uh, we will go over that, how to access things, how to find out where to shoot. Um, and how to take photographs that are more than just here I am, you know, tell a story uh, with your with your photos. So it is a skills class. It is not just we're going over and learning about the culture and then we write a paper about it. This is actually you're using the gear. Um, hope everybody has a phone um, using the gear, using DSLRs to document, um, but learning also about framing, about lighting, about Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Um, about editing, uh, nonlinear editing on the phone. Um, so it's, it's, it's more than your average study abroad, I would say. Um, and it counts for photo J credit as well. Um, we That's all, great. right. And um, ev almost every day we will end up uh, doing a review of work. Um, we are still uh, figuring out the hotel that we are going to be staying at due to the apocalypse and all that things are kind of a little bit behind, but we know it's going to be a three star or four star which in which in England is pretty good. Um, so there will always be at the end of the day kind of a review of what's going on. Um, and uh, you will have uh, Wi Fi access the whole time. Uh, usually, I think I had it in Barcelona I have it in Paris I know yeah we have a portable hotspot. So we can depend on that. You can also get one. So all those kind of details, like how to pack, <laughs> what to bring, um, what phone should I have, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff we go through in our pre-departure meetings. So don't we're, we cover everything. When you go, you are prepared. Um, and because it's June, it's the, May 27th. 27th through June Seven. You'll probably, if you don't live here, you won't be around here. So you can fly from wherever is most convenient for you. And uh, 
Um, I will already hopefully be in Europe, but you, you know, flights can be arranged with Jim. Um, guys, I mean, as we're talking, are there any questions? Feel free to, not one. What's our favorite color? Anything? What? You are quiet, my goodness. <laughs> okay, oh, I'm trying to see, it's kind of weird right. not seeing where we are here. Oh, we're, we're on a Mac, okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, scholarships. Some of you may be wondering how the, how do you pay for this thing? Um, there are amazing opportunities to pay from everything from if you're a Barrett student to um, um, I don't know if there's any Cronkite specific, but not yet. Not yet but there's there's um, uh, study abroad, diversity scholarships. Um, there are so many. Uh, it's just crazy if you go to the study abroad site and you do a search for funding scholarships and you put in a few parameters you will not believe how much you come up with there are even scholarships for people who have never left arizona different groups i mean it's, it's pretty amazing don't forget in the price of the program for any of our programs in study abroad um you get three credits too so you, you get something from it and then also it covers everything but the flight um one meal a day well we get breakfast every day there are a few dinners that are included and um so so what's included breakfast every day hotel a few dinners uh all entry your, fees to everywhere we go yeah all the transport to wherever you have to go we have that covered back and forth from the airport <clears throat> now if you're already in europe which sometimes students do that they're already there and they want to meet us you are responsible for getting to the hotel and vice versa if you want to stay late you can stay late um you're just on your own we, we cover you for the time frame of the trip um but you can arrange your flights as as you need we have a lot of people we have people confirmed already we have a ton that are accepted what we're telling is people is nobody don't buy your flights yet we need to make sure that a the trip is confirmed and then we'll start um, pushing out, you know, okay, here's what makes sense. The one thing you should do no matter what is if, if you don't have a passport now, <laughs> get a passport. So, um, and as, as much as there is um, a schedule, uh, you know, the first day, for example, we'll see all the sites and then we'll go to the Tower of London at some point and we'll go to BBC, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of time for you to do your own thing. Um, and we'll talk about safety and traveling in groups and everything, but um, not every minute is programmed. So everybody will have a little bit of their own time to explore on their own. Yeah, and just so you know, Jim's been on many trips. I've been doing study abroad for 10 years. I've always brought everybody home. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a great experience. How many of you have been out, outside of the country? <laughs> is that great? Oh my goodness, like with the mass. Oh, okay, I'm going to ask you to come up. Come up. Chris, are we good to go with the... Between okay. the lights and your mask, I'm like, I think it's Greg. Yes. Do you want to step through the presentation? Before we get the yeah, but just have a seat because we're going to talk to you. So I have to see where we are. Can we, can you go forward a couple of slides? You have to be smarter than the, where do I point it? Oh, there we go. So some of the places you will go. Um, as we said, TV stations, newspapers, um, this is a uh, elective for the imaging focus in GIT, in case you guys don't know, you have a, we have a concurrent degree with you, GIT and journalism. Uh, some of you may have known Gabe Hoffer. She was one of our star GIT students and one of your star students. Um, it also works for MCO 498, 598. One thing very important, you can't sign up for the class. Even if you've confirmed on the trip, you have to wait for, for study abroad to put you in. So that'll happen. You wanna talk about, well, we kind of talked about yeah, that. Yeah, we kind of talked we? about what's covered and what's not. Um, there's the fee. Oh, and personal expenses, you're on your own. So I take students to Paris too, and there's always somebody who runs over to Louis Vuitton or something. You're on your own, okay? But we will take care of your regular 
as much as we can regular stuff but if you want to bring extra cash and we'll talk about euros and how to do all that sort of stuff before we go what do we have here we talked a little bit about uh, funding hard to click a link on a slide but I know. If you can search um okay there are some travel grants now priority deadlines have already passed but there you go um there are still workshops study abroad does workshops every other week it's on zoom highly recommend you attend it if you're worried about paying uh, it's a little late to say ask for your christmas present to be this but you know there are ways to get funded be creative um oh this is really important um, so we have a certain amount of students already confirmed, and then we have a certain amount accepted, which means they've completed all the process. Those that are accepted are first in line to confirm. And if we're at the, the uh, max, which I'll talk about in a minute, we won't let anybody else get accepted till we know. Okay, make it simple. If you don't confirm, if you're accepted and you don't confirm by, I think, February 22nd, uh, you kind of get bumped so the people on the waiting list, which we have, move in to um, then have a choice to confirm. So don't wait. <laughs> uh, March 1st is the latest. Get your passport, blah, blah, blah. Uh, by the way, in case your families want to know, um, payment can be broken into payments you don't have to pay in one lump sum so you can you can work on that Do you want to say uh, no. there is a fifty dollar application fee just to apply to it i don't know if that goes towards it if they get accepted or not uh, i think I'm, I'm not entirely sure i think it goes into juan's pocket yeah, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay i can't so yeah this is where we're at right now um we needed 12 to make it happen we've got way over 12 already um, 16 students max, so I think we have... Between confirmed and accepted, yeah. we are at 16. Right. It doesn't mean 16 confirmed, but what we're saying is if you have any questions, email us right away, and um, we can clarify anything you need clarified. I think that might be... Again, this is a sample hotel. Uh, I have never been... The place we went in Barcelona was great. Don't, don't, it was really good. It's really good. Um, and we usually do our presentations in the hotel. Whoops, wrong way. Is that it? Nope, there it is. OK, that's just our information, which I'm sure you guys can get out to them. And here we are. But I want to introduce somebody very special. And I'm going to massage your ego a little bit here. Thanks. This is Greg Hani. What, you graduated last year? I graduated May last year, yeah. Okay. It's hard to remember. This is already a star reporter for NPR. And you were on twice today so far. About That would make sense. About um, the Brnovich nonsense. Yeah. So um, Greg's doing quite well, but Greg went to Barcelona with us, which is why we asked him to join us. So I'm going to stop talking and let you tell, tell them about Barcelona. So right from the beginning i kind of didn't take penny's advice because i was able to get a plane ticket for six hundred dollars and no it was straight through but it was because i bought super early because i applied super early and got in super early so but then from day one it's kind of you're not sh quite sure what you're getting into because there's what 15 people how many people were confirmed in our no, a little less than 16, I think. It doesn't matter. But yes, right. it's like 12 or 16 people. You're kind of not sure what you're getting yourself into. The group meetings helped leading up to it. That helped. But then at first, you're not sure what you're getting into. But as it goes on, you kind of get more comfortable with it. And it, I'll speak for myself. I should stop saying you. I got more comfortable with it. And I kind of went out more to explore more. Um, it's kind of hard to remember the itinerary because this was all pre-COVID. and yeah we took uh in that trip we spent a lot of time in barcelona proper but then we went to Sitges, Sitges. Sitges. Uh, beach town and we went to another town by train that was where the picasso not the picasso the ah, uh, dolly. dolly museum was yeah yeah and so we will do 
a certain amount of cultural things, you know, besides just newsrooms. Uh, there's a lot of really cool. Uh, I'd say the majority of it's going to be cultural yeah. things. There, there is a lot of cool stuff in London. I mean, you know. Yeah, I'm kind of, I saw the itinerary. I'm kind of jealous. Fortunately, I had the chance to go to a few of those places in London before I went uh, to Barcelona. That was uh, right after I graduated high school. Um, British Museum's amazing. Um, I can't remember all the other places. I love Covent Garden. I love London. Um, I'm, my mom's from England, so she was able to tour me around there. So that was helpful. Um, tell them how great we were. What's that? Just tell them how great we were. <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah. They were fantastic. I learned a lot about photography from Penny and a lot about um, videography from Jim, who hopefully he'll be around at Cronkite News will help you out if you go to Cronkite News can help you out. Um, because he, even though I was in a different um, av area for Cronkite News, he was in an adjacent area and he helped me out quite a bit through that. Um, I didn't take any other classes that Penny could have helped out, but she obviously would have. And I think it's also a testament that Penny reached out to me almost three years later. No, oh, she, oh, no, 2022. Yeah, we, I went in 2019, but she reached out three years later to come for me to come talk. I also went to a party in 2019 before all the COVID stuff happened at Penny's place. So, and I still talked to my roommate, Tay. Oh, oh God, Tay is, Tay, we, Tay never left Europe. No, he never, he, I think he, I'm not totally <laughs> sure if he's back he's yet. Yeah, but I spent two weeks with him just rooming, but we still talk together to this day, even though he's in a different state, we'll just shoot each other messages on Instagram. So that is something to stress the networking and the friendships. Um, we take pride in we I remember everybody I've gone pretty much has gone study abroad with me. We had a great group. We really did. Um, and uh, I'm actually in touch with a few people uh, from that still. Um, I still have students reach out to me for yeah. videography questions and editing questions from that trip. Yeah, so um, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience. If there's any way you can put it together, I cannot recommend it enough, uh, especially if it's gonna be your first experience going overseas. If it's not your first and you're a seasoned traveler, you still can have a great time because you do get some free time. We, we don't you know book every hour of your day all the time. There is free time, there's free day. Yeah, well, the class was great, but in my free time, I would, basically, I would try to get out into the city as much as possible. And some people do other things, but I would basically just hit up all the museums because I love art. And I also went to the um, aquarium that they had at Barcelona, which is an okay uh, aquarium, but it was still a fun experience. Because if you're gonna be out across the country spending all this money, you might as well get the most out of it. Um, but that is one warning I'll have. If this is your first, uh, trip outside of the country, be aware of the bug, the travel bug. Because right when I got home, I booked a ticket to Japan just a few weeks later. Oh my goodness. Because I just couldn't get enough of travel. So in the same summer, I was able to go to Barcelona and Japan because I just couldn't get enough yeah. of just experiencing what's out there. I mean, if you guys, you're in journalism, right? So. I don't know if it's in the definition, but it should be. You can't just stay in your own little neighborhood. It's about exploring and learning. Um, and the world is yours. It's a little challenging right now, but it'll come back. Don't worry. It'll come back. And the, you know, the great thing is Penny mentioned before Heart Travel, who sets this up. Um, they give us a great contact person there. We had a contact person in Barcelona yes. that was just amazing and traveled everywhere with us, gave us ideas, gave us access. You know, we had um a little funds at the end of the trip mm -hmm. and we decided to do this big flamenco di dinner and she set all that up on the fly for us and um so it's not like we're stumbling around and finding things to do these are definitely um planned out and yeah. well thought that is something to tell parents if they're concerned and you should know that we have somebody on the ground there's a team on the ground usually one person at least that's with us and there are more people in the city um and uh, I've worked with this group for 10 years and they're fantastic. This is not, you know, um, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like family now, but they will take care of you. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's, it's, really, it's, it's really very, very cool. 
Um, but again, a lot of those minor detail things we will go over in pre-departure. So we can't stress enough, you, we need you guys, if you've already been accepted, to confirm before March 1st. Um, and then from March 1st to March 8th is kind of a gray area where you might still be able to get in if we didn't hit our numbers. But I would say March 1st. You gotta have some questions. Ma imagine you're interviewing us. What do you wanna know? Gotta manifest a question. Come on. Yes. It, it, no, it's not in the professional program. It just counts for that photo J intro to photojournalism credit. Um, and then it's a, what is it for? Oh, in GIT, it covers uh, anything in the imaging focus, which is photo and video. Yeah. Which ended up being a really useful, um, not just credit for me to have because, oh, I just got an, I think it was an elective. Hard to remember, Cronkite changes stuff a lot, what things count for. But also, it just kind of changed my perspective on photography and how I took images, because before then I had one idea of photography, but then afterwards, my idea of photography totally shifted to um, try to be more in the moment, because before then, um, I would just, you know, on hikes, I'd try to set up pictures, but uh, after that trip, I'd try to be as careful with the settings in camera, so I could try to capture whatever was happening around me to be more immediate. Yeah, a lot of photojournalism, you don't have time for setup. <laughs> so you have to learn to think on your feet. Um, not that we're gonna be covering breaking news, uh, unless the Ferris wheel lets go, or, you know. But, um, but it's, it's, a good, it's a good way to learn how to be familiar with your piece of equipment so that you don't have to think and you can. You can but I mean, skills you, like, to your point, skills like that could transfer into the Cronkite News Professional Program mm -hmm. where you're doing oh, yeah. photography for our digital site or whatever. So, and then videography and editing, same thing. Okay. I, I, we don't want to take all your time. <laughs> now Penny's going to sing a song. No. Please, please do. You guys can reach out to us anytime. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. All right, so remember if you have any questions, Cronkite Global at asu.edu, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. This is being um, streamed live right now, and we will also distribute the recording. If you guys need anything else, feel free to reach out. Thank you for being here today.